In a matrix equation, any translations are shown in a 2 by 1 column matrix. Now if C is any positive real number, C placed in this position is added to the X value and so it represents a translation of C units to the right. Minus C in this position represents a translation of C units to the left. And a zero here means there is no horizontal translation. If we now place C in this position, it is added to the Y value and so it represents a translation of C units up. Minus C represents a translation of C units down. And finally, zero here means that there is no vertical translation. Information about any reflections is contained in a 2 by 2 matrix that is multiplied to the original point matrix. Reflection in the x-axis leaves the x value unchanged and the y value multiplied by minus 1. So 1 and minus 1 are on the main diagonal of the matrix and we have zeros elsewhere. When it comes to reflection in the y-axis, it is the x value that is multiplied by minus 1 and the y value that is unchanged. So these numbers on the main diagonal are swapped around. Now reflection in the line y equals x is different because it affects both x and y values at the same time. Remember, in this case, xy is mapped to yx. The 2 by 2 matrix that gives us this mapping has zeros on the main diagonal and ones elsewhere. Finally, let's review dilations. Remember that dilation from the x-axis affects the y value only, so dilation from the x-axis by some positive real number k results in 1 and k in these positions on the main diagonal. If on the other hand we dilate from the y-axis by a factor of k, then the x value is multiplied by k and the y value is unchanged, so these numbers on the main diagonal are swapped. Sometimes the order in which transformations are applied matters and sometimes it doesn't. A horizontal translation and a vertical translation can be applied to a point in any order and the result will be the same. So information for both types of translation can be placed in the translation matrix without further consideration of order. This matrix shows a translation of two units to the right and four units down. And this matrix shows a translation of half a unit to the left and pi units up. These four transformations can also be applied in any order and produce the same image. Reflection in the x-axis, reflection in the y-axis, dilation from the x-axis and dilation from the y-axis. So the information for all of these can also be contained in a single matrix without further thoughts about order. In this matrix we see a reflection in the y-axis, a dilation from the y-axis by a factor of 2, and a dilation from the x-axis by a factor of 4. And in this matrix we see a dilation from the y-axis by a factor of root 3, a reflection in the x-axis, and a dilation from the x-axis by a factor of 2 thirds. Here are a couple of questions for you to think about and try to solve. Pause the video now as the solutions follow. If you are unsure about finding a transformation matrix that will achieve several transformations applied in a specified order, 
you can always apply the transformations one at a time. In this case, we apply the matrix for reflection in the line y equals x first, and the image is given by this calculation. Then we apply the matrix for dilation from the x-axis by a factor of 2 to the first image and we achieve the final image. We could have done all this with one calculation. Apply the reflection first and then apply the dilation to this result. Multiplying these two matrices gives us the matrix that will perform the reflection followed by the dilation. Notice the order in which the matrices are multiplied. The reflection matrix is here and the dilation matrix is in front. Using this observation, we can answer the second question. If we want to apply the dilation first and then the reflection, the matrices need to be multiplied in this order. So now the matrix that will perform the dilation first and the reflection second is this one. Notice we have a different result from question one because the order of transformations does matter here. Another way to tackle these questions is to consider the effect of the transformations on a point and leave the consideration of matrices till later. Now xy reflected in the line y equals x gives us yx and then this point dilated from the x-axis by a factor of 2 gives us y2x. Now we ask ourselves what matrix here is going to give us this result. Now 0, 1 here gives us 0x's and 1y which gives us this entry and a 2, 0 here gives us two x's and zero y's, which gives us the second entry. Now, similarly with the second question, when xy is dilated by a factor of two from the x-axis, it becomes x2y. And then reflecting in the line y equals x, we have 2yx. Once again, we consider what matrix in this position will produce this result. 0, 2 in the first row gives us 0 x's and 2 y's, which is the first entry. And then 1, 0 in the second row gives us 1 x and 0 y's, which is the second entry. And so we have the same results we obtained with the previous method. This is the matrix for the reflection followed by the dilation. And this is the matrix for the dilation followed by the reflection. Let's now take a look at some matrix equations involving a combination of reflections, dilations and translations. The right hand side of this matrix equation shows two matrices being multiplied and then another matrix being added on. By the order of operations, the multiplication is done first. And so the dilation and reflection expressed by this matrix occur before the translations shown here. This matrix equation shows a dilation by a factor of 2 from the y-axis and a reflection in the x-axis, followed by a translation of 3 units to the right 
and two units down. Now to find the image point, we perform the operations on the right hand side. Multiply first, we have 2x minus y, and then add on the translation matrix, gives us our image point, 2x plus 3 minus y minus 2. Now consider this change to the equation we had before. By the order of operations, the addition in this bracket must now occur before the multiplication. So the translations now occur before the dilation and reflection. To find the image point, we add the matrices in the bracket to get x plus 3, y minus 2 and then perform this multiplication to get our image point 2x plus 6 minus y plus 2. It's important to note here that introducing the brackets to our matrix equation was significant. It not only changed the order of transformations but also produced a different image point. Now here's an exercise for you to try. Pause the video as the solutions follow. The first equation shows just one transformation and that is a translation of two units to the left. The second equation shows just two transformations, a dilation of factor 4 from the y-axis and a dilation of factor 5 from the x-axis. The order is not important here. With the third equation, remember to state the transformations shown by this matrix before this matrix. So here we see a reflection in the x-axis followed by a reflection in the line y equals x. Here we see a reflection in the y-axis and a dilation from the y-axis by a factor of a half followed by two translations, a translation of 10 units to the left and one unit down. In the last equation, did you notice the minus in the bracket here? This bracket can be rewritten as xy plus minus 1 minus 1, bringing the minus 1 into the matrix. Now we can clearly see that there are two translations that occur first, a translation of one unit to the left, and one unit down and then we have a reflection in the x-axis and a dilation from the x-axis by a factor of root 7. The image points for question 2 could be obtained by combining the given matrices as shown here or by considering the effect of each transformation in order on the original point. For example, another way to do part C is to take the original point, apply the reflection in the x-axis, and then apply the reflection in the line y equals x. Now we come to question 3. There are a number of different approaches and possible answers to this question. You can build up the required equation with matrices considering one transformation at a time. First of all, we apply the reflection in the x-axis and then the translation of two units to the right. The reflection in the y-axis needs to be applied after these two transformations. So we need to put this in brackets and pre-multiply by the matrix for reflection in the y-axis. This is one possible answer to 3a, 
Another possible answer could be obtained by expanding the brackets like this. and then simplify by multiplying these matrices and these. Basically, any equation that gives you the correct image point will be correct here. Let's take a look at what the image point is. Starting with the original point, we apply the reflection in the x-axis, then we translate by two units to the right, and then we reflect in the y-axis. And so we have our image point. Another way to obtain the image point is to combine these matrices as we've done before. Here we have the same answer as before, but with the x-coordinate expanded. We also now have our answer to the next question. The image point x prime y prime is negative x minus 2 minus y. The answer to the last question is yes, there is another set of transformations with exactly the same image point. In fact, there are many. One possible answer presents itself in this line. What we see here is a reflection in the x-axis and a reflection in the y-axis, followed by a translation of two units to the left. In the next video, I'll look at other applications of matrix equations. I hope you'll join me then.